raise your hand, unmute yourself, um, and we will pause periodically to address questions. A reminder that we are recording this for our records, um, so keep that in mind as well, but please feel free to participate. A few general updates we're going to talk about before we jump into today's meeting. Um, our timeline has been extended a little bit. Uh, we've been in contact with GEMA and FEMA to talk about our timeline, and we have come to the conclusion that it's best if we take a little bit longer to get this project done so that we can get it done um, correctly and to its highest quality. So this will allow for firm adoption for Guyton, Rankin, and Springfield. Um, our cities need to adopt the most recent flood insurance rate maps. That's a FEMA requirement. Um, this will allow for more detailed flood modeling um, that we have currently underway with UGA. And this will allow for additional time for coordination and review. Um, we want to be sure that everybody who can review it is reviewing it. The more eyes on this, the better. Um, we want a variety of people to review it. So not just people from the county and the cities, but also um, academia, environmental groups, um, and neighboring jurisdictions as well. So um, having a little bit of an extended timeline will allow us to, to coordinate that. So. Um, if you have any questions about the extended timeline, let us know. Um, we'll be happy to answer them. A little bit about the draft organization and review. Um, we're excited that we have a draft um, and it's coming along really well. So we want to talk a little bit today just about the organization of that draft. Um, chapter one is an introduction. Chapter two, we talk about the planning process and the public engagement side of things. Um, chapter three, we profile all the different hazards that impact Effingham County. Chapter four is an asset inventory. Chapter five is a vulnerability assessment. Chapter six is a capabilities assessment that assesses all the current capabilities of the county and the cities. Chapter seven um, will be where we list the mitigation strategies and then plant and chapter eight deals with plan evaluation and maintenance. So as I said, we do have a draft on paper. We're currently working with Clint and different individuals at the county to organize the review of this draft. This is an initial review. Um, this is our first draft, so there will be plenty of opportunity to review. But Clint is helping us organize teams to review each chapter. So if you're on one of those teams, we thank you so much for your help. Um, if you haven't been contacted, but you would like to be on one of these review teams, maybe you have a specific chapter that you're really interested in, um, reach out to Clint or reach out to us and we'll make sure that we get you the draft of that chapter to review as soon as possible. Um, again, this is a first draft. As we said, our timeline's a little bit extended, so we'll be having another public meeting where we present a more final draft. Um, but yes, please let us know if you're interested in helping us with the review process. Um, it, it surely takes a village, as we all know. OK, so today's meeting, we're going to talk a little bit um, about the prioritization survey that Lindsay sent out to y'all um, last week. We're going to spend some time categorizing um, the different mitigation actions that have been generated this year that come from the old plan and that come from all of the related plans. And then we'll talk just briefly about some upcoming important dates. So we've already got some responses to the prioritization survey, and that's fantastic. If you've completed it, we thank you so much. We know that it's long. Um, we know it's a little bit of a doozy, but we can't emphasize enough how important it is um, to get this input and to get this input from a variety of individuals. We, we want responses from all three cities, from multiple people at the county. Um, the more input, the better. Please, if you haven't done the prioritization survey yet, we'd like you to respond by Friday, March 31st. So that gives you all of next week to work on it as well. We recommend pairing up with a buddy or a group and working in a team to go over this survey. Um, and like we said, we know it's long. Um, so we recommend completing the survey in more than one sitting. Um, if you sign in with a Google or Gmail account, it will automatically save your responses and you can come back to it. Um, 
be aware that that may not be the case if you are not signed in with a Google or Gmail account. Um, so I wouldn't close that tab if you haven't quite finished the survey yet. Um, again, thank you to everyone who's already responded to it. We really, really appreciate that. Um, for those of you who haven't, we'll talk briefly, briefly about the survey. Um, it's a prioritization designation of high, medium, or low for each mitigation measure that we've generated. And that designation of high, medium, or low priority is based on a cumulative rating from the 10 categories that we'll run through right now. And this is what you'll see in the survey. So for each mitigation action, we want you to consider the life safety, the property protection, the social impacts. Um, is it technically feasible? Does the public support this mitigation action? So what are the political variables surrounding it? And then we also want you to consider the legal impacts, the economic impacts. Is there funding available? Um, what are the environmental impacts? Um, will it protect and preserve Effingham County's natural resources? Um, does the county or the city have the capability to implement and maintain the action? And is there a local champion? So is there a strong advocate for the project? So that's what you'll see on the survey, and you'll go through these for each of the mitigation actions. Um, and then based on all of your responses in the prioritization survey, we'll be able to designate for each mitigation action if it is of high, medium, or low priority for the relevant jurisdiction. Um, we'll so pause Anna, just, yeah. I see that, that um, three is high and one is low. <laughs> That's to yes. collaborate, coordinate on that. Yep. Yes. Um, that is definitely something to note, pay attention to um, what it is that you're stating. Three is, is high, yes, and one is low. Um, any questions about the prioritization survey? We'll pause for just a second. Feel free to unmute or throw it in the chat. Okay, if you have any questions about it, reach out to myself or Lindsay. Um, we are both available to answer any questions you might have about this. Okay, so for today's meeting, um, we are going to spend some time. So in addition to the prioritization, we need to collect other information about each mitigation action. We need to know the relevant municipality, what hazard it addresses, what department will be responsible for implementation, so public works, emergency management, or planning and zoning, et cetera. Um, the status, is it ongoing, completed, um, deferred, the estimated year of completion, the cost, and the funding sources. Today, we're going to go through the mitigation actions, and we're going to focus on two things, the relevant municipality and the department that would be responsible for implementation. Lindsay and Kayla are standing by with an Excel spreadsheet to take down all of this information. I don't want you to necessarily ignore the other factors. So if you have information about funding sources for a specific mitigation action or a status, feel free to volunteer that as well. Um, this meeting will require your participation and your input. Um, the more you participate, the more you volunteer information, the speedier this process will be. Um, so for each mitigation action, and we won't get through all of them today, um, we'll finish up at our next meeting, April 5th, but we'll get as far as we can today. So we'll flash a mitigation action on the screen, and then it'd be really helpful if you could unmute or throw in the chat um, the relevant municipality and what department would implement that action. So relevant municipality we're looking for, is it just the county? Is it just Rankin, just Guyton, or is it all the cities and the county? Um, so think about that, what, who, who exactly would be carrying out that mitigation action. Um, any questions before we get started? Okay. So like I said, Lindsay and Kayla are taking down notes um, so if you unmute yourself, please speak loud and clear so that they can hear you and we'll get rolling. First one, encourage a review of the comprehensive plan by county and city officials and promote public awareness of the plan. I know this is ongoing, um, I believe. Teresa, maybe you can comment on that. I believe that you guys are doing a comprehensive plan update right now. 
we're, we're the county is updating a portion of the plan. It's the future land use element, and we've had um, some public input. We've kind of slowed down. We're kind of bogged down in other matters right now, but that. The comprehensive plan is a joint plan, so everything should be done collaboratively with the county and the cities. Great. And we would say then development services or planning and zoning would be responsible? Uh, for the county development services, I don't know who all for the cities. I don't know what their departments are named. Probably, uh, I mean, Rankin has a planning department. I don't know. And then and Springfield has community development. Community development, that's right. Okay. Great. All right, next one is develop and distribute informational packets about wildland urban interface to increase public awareness of wildland fire interface issues. Uh, this is both um, the county and Rankin. County and Rankin, and that would be EMA, Clint? Um, that would be fire for both. And then, <laughs> excuse me, actually, that state additionally, Georgia Forestry Commission would need to be in there as well. Okay, awesome. So, fire departments and Georgia Forestry Commission. Increase public awareness of water conservation issues by publishing articles in the local newspaper and providing bulletins to local schools. And if we don't have a uh, anyone volunteer information for this, Lindsay and Kayla, we can star it and we can come back to it. Right, let's skip that one. Increase public awareness of the different scenic river classifications and impacts of each category. Yeah, I don't know who would be responsible for that. That really might be um almost a, like at the it would intersect with planning functions if there was a scenic river designation then then that would increase um uh protections and floodplains and along the river the river what the, itself and the the types of de development so probably understanding that would be um most directly relevant to planning is what my my initial take on that is Teresa what do you think um, I am not aware that we have a scenic river, a designated scenic river. If we do, we have not been doing anything to promote it. I mean, if, if we do, let me know and we can add it to our future land use layer. I'm not aware of it. It may predate me. It may not exist. Okay. I think and it was were... a recommended action. It was definitely not one of the ones that it, it just was, this was carried over from previously. Um, and we don't really have the environmental groups here quite yet, but I think we understood from the last plan period that it might have been um, one of the main comments coming from environmental environmental um, interests. So the yeah. last time that I checked, the Ebenezer Creek is, is considered a Georgia Scenic River and a National Natural Landmark. Okay. Um, okay. And okay. we, the city of Springfield, have had an initiative. It's unfortunately fallen to the wayside in the last few years, but the Ebenezer Springfield Greenway is something that we're trying to help promote and conserve a little bit. We've got a few different pieces of property that have been donated to us that are along the creek and are trying to create access points to the waterway from a kind of a tourist and a conservation perspective to help people get connected with the creek. And we've got a, a website that we created and an app that we got a grant oh. to create a few years ago as well. Great, That's Aaron, thanks. So let that one may relate to Springfield um, and community development. That sounds great, Aaron. Thank you so much.
OK, encourage homeowners to install backflow valves to prevent reverse flow flood damages. Um, Kristen, is this something that EOM might do? I think I see Kristen on, but I'm not sure. Kristen, can you hear us? Hey, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, so I will have to check with the engineers that actually deal with the plan review just to confirm exactly how it's worded um, and some of those specifications and requirements. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that, to be honest with you. <laughs> OK, no worries. We just want to collect this information for as many of these items as we can today. And if we have to come back to it, eventually we'll be sending out a spreadsheet to everybody with mitigation actions related to their jurisdiction only. Um, and we'll have you guys help us fill in the blanks eventually. But we want to tackle as much of it as we can today. So any information that you have really does help. Um, and it's less we'll have to do later. Educate citizens about GIS hazard mapping online services. Um, I think I saw IT jump on today. Um, I don't know if that's um, an educational outreach thing that could happen on the website. Yeah, Matt and Chris, we miss your camera <laughs> officially. Uh, this is Teresa. I'll say that for the floodplain program, we do uh, have paid. Uh, there's information on our website about our floodplain um, management program and that does I believe reference or link to the GIS interactive which is where the flood layer can be added so people can learn about their flood hazard in that way. Awesome so let's assign this one to Effingham County and the cities. Teresa is that linked to the cities do you know can they all access that map as well? Uh, yeah, the interactive map is available to anyone who goes to our website. OK. So theoretically, um, the cities of Guyton, Rankin and Springfield could then post a link on their websites that would link back to y'all's. They could, yeah. OK. All right, increase public awareness of public address system and procedures to follow if a hazardous material spill event occurs by posting on social media, the EMA website, and providing bulletins to local churches and schools. Um, that would be county through emergency management. Perfect. Thank you, Clint. Seek training and updates on current policies and procedures regarding safety readiness. Um, I would think that would be the cities in the county. Through um, EMA? I can't, really, I can't speak for the county, or excuse me, for the cities, but I know we do have um, a safety program that goes through human resources. Okay. Perfect. So Kayla and Lindsay, let's put through the county human resources. Yeah, that's actually almost like our own um, individual like readiness program and maybe in introducing something into the curriculum if it's not already there. Yeah, it's great. Inform residents and businesses about individual and family emergency preparedness. Um, I would think this would be city and county. I um, agree. As far as through the county, general emergency management handles this. OK, perfect. Um, this is one that we generated um, at our last meeting, provide hazard information and outreach materials to DFCS office, health department, school registration offices, um, open house events, real estate agents, chamber of commerce, local churches, and utility notification letters to provide to the community. Um, so basically public education and outreach regarding hazard information. That should be um, the county and all three cities. Correct. Okay. 
probably through EMA, Clint, right? Uh, general, yes. Okay. Um, organize informational presentations at group or club meetings. Oh, Active. that's cities and county through EMA. Perfect. Thank you. Expand and increase social media videos and outreach. Um, that would be the cities and counties. Um, as far as the counties, um, it's going to be both EMA and um, public information, the public information coordinator. Perfect. Um, this was a suggestion from last time as well. Organize an all hazards community expo. So that to me sounds like a great opportunity opportunity for collaboration among all three cities and the county. It is, and we also in the past have tried to collaborate with surrounding counties as well. Awesome. Yes, even better. Um, and that could really be multiple departments, I think. Um, EMA, public information, maybe development services as well. Yep, and all your emergency services. Okay, yes, and all your emergency services, yep. Right, education and outreach for citizens regarding mitigation actions on their private property. Uh, cities and county through... I would say both emergency management and possibly um, either development services through the county or whatever the equivalent would be at the city level. Okay. So Lindsay and Kayla, development services equivalent at the cities um, in addition to EMA. Basic level of training for all staff to be better prepared to share responsibilities in emergency situations. Clint, is that part of the emergency operations plan too? I would think, right? That actually, that's pretty all encompassing. Um, I mean, it is cities and counties both, but it's not just emergency management. That should be through really all the departments. Um, as far as like department heads should be having that conversation with their staff as well. Okay. Regular meeting with all water and sewer providers at once. Um, so, Kristen, maybe you could help us out a little bit with this one. Um, I know yeah. EOM doesn't do water and sewer for everybody, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, but I do think that, that would be both Effingham and cities, just general coordination on any kind of service delivery, um, in addition to connections on utilities and things like that. Okay, so we'd want to loop in the public works departments at all the cities um, and the county. Um, okay, as well as EOM. Yes. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, this one is very similar, so it probably has the same answer, Lindsay and Kayla. Regular meetings with water and sewer providers to discuss the storm response. Um, anything else to add for that one, Kristen? No, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you. Improve coordination and integration of county, municipal, private sector, and non-governmental organization partners. Uh, let's just say cities and counties, or cities and county, and... Ideally, like all departments. Yeah. Okay. Um, HMP planning committee to attend meetings and cooperative effects to keep the plan current. So that should be the county and all three cities um, and ideally spearheaded by EMA. Clint, do you agree with that? I do. Cool. Thank you.
create a speakers bureau for disaster related topics that focus on mitigation and preparedness measures. Do a pre hurricane season meeting. Um, that's cities and county through emergency management. Thank you. Seek grants to move existing utility lines and fiber optic lines underground. So, um, Kristen, maybe you can help us with this one too. Um, That's definitely be cities and counties. Okay. And Clint, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think y'all just hired a new grant writer. Is that correct? We did. We did. Okay. So I don't know if she's really her own department, but would she be? She falls someone... underneath um, finance. Finance. Okay. Great. That's Jody. It is. Okay. All right. Um, require the placement of permanent marking of easements for underground utilities by updating regulations and development standards. Also think that would be cities and counties. Okay. Um, Teresa would. Services. Oh, sorry, Kristen, I missed that. And probably through just the development services. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> um, I think we talked about this before. I mean, I'd need some model language or we don't we don't currently require this. And would it be retroactive, you know, or from a, some starting point going forward? It, it would be helpful to have model language to look at because, you know, we don't currently have this requirement. OK. Yeah, and I think part of this action could be rewording it a little bit so that um, it also covers like updating that language, um, which it sort of does. But I think if we reword it so that we have like updating the regulation development standards and updating that language and then requiring um, once they've been updated. Perfect. Um, OK, well, we can make a note um, on this one that some model ordinance language would be very helpful. You know, for what it's worth, we use our GIS mapping service to designate where the utilities are and where the lines are at. So we have a in the field app basically for phones or laptops where they're standing there at pinpoints where they're standing and then where the line is. So uh, kind of serves the same purpose. OK, that would very cool. Yeah. And that's for Springfield, um, Kayla and Lindsay, just FYI for that note. Well, the county uses the same um, the same software. That we okay. Use. Okay. Well, yeah. If this is Teresa, if Aaron's referring to right spot, yes, we do mm -hmm. have that. We don't have field access to, to it for inspectors using tablets, so we're not quite as advanced as Springfield with that. Yeah, and and that only has water and sewer. That doesn't have telephone, power, and other other infrastructure modeled in it, it just has water and sewer and and only the water and sewer that the cities and the counties own, not private systems. OK, so maybe it's worth tweaking this action item to um, address the software that we do have, getting maybe some iPads for the field for inspectors for the county um, and maybe filling in the gaps with utilities that are currently marked does that make sense i mean this is potentially a really large project that i, I i'd be hesitant i think we'd need to clear this as a as a as an activity you know with higher our higher authorities we've just completed or just closing out a massive project to scan and digitize water and sewer infrastructure in, in right spot, which is what Aaron referred to. So, you know, we've made that effort as far as requiring placement of permanent markers. You're talking about a physical marker on the ground. That's what I'm interpreting this to mean that that's a private property issues. I'm not sure that we can require that, retro, you know, retroactively, but for going forward, sure, we could consider that in our development regs, but we would need some model language. But as far as having information available to inspectors in the field, again, you know, we development services has just been approved to uh, get new permitting and licensing software, and that will involve uh, tablets for building inspectors in the field and presumably 
also the EOM inspectors who do site plan review or site visits. So this is something that we can maybe you know incorporate in the future, but I think we need to clarify exactly what this means and what we're committing to. Okay, sure. Um, just as a reminder, FEMA does encourage you to sort of shoot for the stars when you're hazard mitigation planning. Um, it's it's okay to think big, and if it's not realistic, that's okay. Um, but yes, we can certainly tweak this, drill down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I totally hear what you're saying. Let's move on to the next one. Um, this one I think needs to be tweaked a little as well. Adopt uniform addressing ordinance for existing buildings. Do we have that already or not? Not yet. I don't think we have anything specific in our ordinances in Springfield that tells you how to address something. Um, okay. I think we're just so, I mean, we're so old here in the county that it's just when new addresses come in, they're filling in, you know, and if we see something that's confusing, we do try to correct that at the time of a property sale or a building renovation or something like that. But I don't think we in Springfield or anything specific on that. Okay. Uh, for the county, we just have a reference document that I've been looking at, but um, the ordinances most definitely need to be updated, both for addressing policies as well as the road naming structures. Okay, awesome. So let's, um, Lindsay and Kayla, tweak this to add road naming as well. Um, and we can put it, Pam, you're with the county, correct? Yes, I'm the GIS manager. That's right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, Effingham County's recently constructed tertiary treatment wastewater facility produces high quality effluent, which can be used for irrigation. Given the critical limits of water resources in the region, reuse water is an excellent water source for irrigation, especially for the county's rapidly growing residential sector. The county should find ways to effectively implement this resource countywide. So that's a challenging one, if anyone has any thoughts on that. Part of the part of the challenge with that is one getting getting the lines to the areas where it can be used, and then the other challenge is actually having uh, residents use the water. Uh, they think it's treated water, and they scared of it. And they don't want their kids and their dogs playing playing in the yard after they've used it for a sprinkler. So a lot of that is education for the residents and then um, actually getting it out to the locations. Okay, so maybe the first step for this one really is public education and maybe um, Kayla and Lindsay, we can tweak this one to be more about educating people about this type of reuse water um, and we can start there. And then that would probably be countywide um, Ideally, with the public information officer, could maybe put out some information regarding that. But we can come back to this one. Draft plan for countywide drainage network and improvement program. Well, Teresa just talked about like the the um, asset inventory for water and wastewater and the stormwater master planning is underway. So maybe those those could dovetail together, perhaps. I'm trying to remember the scope of work, um, Kristen, for the for the stormwater plan um, or Angela, um, if you're on here. Uh, I think that should be a natural um, a natural extension after that stormwater plan is in place. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. Um, and I know some of the um, municipalities have been joining in on some of these discussions too, just to see how that will impact them and some things that they can do as well. Awesome. So um, the stormwater master plan, is that coming from EOM? No. Pond. Pond. Okay. No, it's coming from Pond. They should have it done by the end of um, 
April, middle of May. As soon as I have it, I will awesome. get it to you. Thank you, Angela. You're welcome. Kayla, Lindsay, that's Pond Engineering. Um, okay. Install backup generators for pump and lift stations and sanitary sewer systems, along with other measures um, such as alarms, flood telemetry meters, remote controls, and switchgear upgrades. Um, I know that in the past some funding's been um, sought after for backup generators. Has that been successful? Is that ongoing? More uh, planned? Okay. 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 Uh, Clint, I don't think y'all had any movement on the county generators. I know. Guyton um, did get some of their funding for their generators, but I think it's still kind of a battle getting getting all those approved. Okay. Yeah, we follow up with GEMA and FEMA on a regular basis, and it's we're still just in a waiting game. Okay, so this is ongoing um, for the county and Guyton, it sounds like. Yes. Okay. All right, coordinate hazmat planning with new turpentine facility and other industrial facilities. Uh, that's cities and county through, for the most part, that's both EMA and the fire departments. EMA and fire, okay. Steer growth toward existing infrastructure. Uh, that would be both cities and county. All right, would that be development services? Yes, because it encompasses anything from zoning to site plan and review. Um, I mean, our dense growth happens where there's existing infrastructure, you know, it has to. So I would say development services is the place. Thank you. All right, complete lift station pump upgrades. I think that's also going to be county and city um, and funding opportunities and grants. Okay, so we're looking for grants for these, Kayla and Lindsay, um, yes. funding source needed. And I know they have gotten some um, over the last few years, ARPA funds, things like that, but continuing to seek those. Cool. All right. Um, review of zoning ordinance for sustainable development initiatives. Um, I think that should be everybody. It should be an ongoing I would think so. ongoing practice. Okay. Through development services, community development, planning, and zoning. Um, I would like to see that be a little more specific. I mean, that's a really general statement and. You know, review and then what? You know, review and make recommendations to incorporate specific types of things or just generic sustainable development. It's sure. Not, we it's not very helpful, like in its it's sort of a basic statement. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Whenever there's an opportunity to better refine the way an action is has been stated, even if it's in the past, um, if we see a better way to do it today, that's like definitely should take that route. That's yeah, great. Thank you, Teresa. Well, because I mean, one could say that cluster development or highly dense development is sustainable because it, you know, stops sprawl. Some people would say that that's bad because it, you know, has a detriment to quality of life. So so it's kind of whose sustainability are we talking about here? It'd be nice if it was really specific or um, if there were some idea. I don't know. I think it's kind of a dangerous statement because it's it can be read different ways by, you know, the, the public versus, you know, staff. Okay. Um, maybe we can circle back with you after the meeting or another time and we can work on revising this together. Um, update water and sewer infrastructure to accommodate growth. I think 
think that goes for cities and counties both continuing on funding and seeking those funding opportunities. Okay. Um, pursue CDBG grants to extend sewer services. Um, that's probably everybody as well. Correct. Okay. Great. Um, procure funding for backup systems for continued operations during weather events, generators, bypass pumps, redundancy, et cetera. Same thing as the, the funding in both county and cities. Okay. Um, develop a CIP capital improvement plan for water and sewer services. County's currently um, working on their master plan, so that would roll into that. Okay, and do any of the cities have a CIP? any anybody's from the cities on that could speak to that so i don't know of like a large master plan on um guyton and rankin i know you know we do work each year on cips and um, improvements but not like a, a complete master plan that i'm aware of okay Improve infrastructure along routes used for transportation of hazardous materials. Uh, that's, I'm not going to say that's incredibly applicable. Okay. We can, we can um, take that out. Um, implement a road and drainage improvement program. Improvement may include installation, rerouting, or increasing the capacity of a storm drainage system. I think that goes back to the ponds um, master planning. Okay. Expansion of roadway system, improvement of local road network. Uh, I mean, this is something that, I mean, it's going to be cities and counties, but it's largely funding driven. Sure. And there is a, a fair amount of money out there right now um, for the transportation, the raise grants, the old, the old tiger grants from DOT. Um, yeah, that's, is it a, a, probably a perfect nexus to Clint with the, with the emergency operations plan? to thinking about evacuation routes and, and things. Um, develop a critical facility maintenance and protection plan. Um, I mean, I'm sure that would be city and county wide. I would imagine that would be through our facilities maintenance. Okay. Acquire easements to allow for necessary maintenance. Um, I'm sure the city and county, I would think this. I think this would also be in the stormwater master plan, probably. Yes. Um, yeah, that's what Kristen just threw in the chat, yeah. stormwater master plan. Oh. Okay, perfect. Um, and probably also largely funding driven, um, depending on what grants are available. Okay. Participate with regional hazmat team. Oh, uh, that's the city and the county fire departments. City and county fire. Okay. 
Probably the same here, Clint, ensure that city county emergency responders have adequate equipment and training for hazmat incidents. Yes, that's correct. OK. Review annually all hazmat transportation routes, relocation routes if necessary. Um, that would be the same. Same thing, fire for city and county. Um, Right. Reduce or strictly enforce hazardous fuel storage. Um, I mean, it's city and county. Is that I an think ordinance? The enforcement or? of fuel storage would, I think that would fall under code enforcement. Okay. I mean, we have a very generic line in our codes of enforcement and stuff that basically says, you know, accumulation of hazardous materials is is a problem that we okay. can address. So I guess if we were to notice something in a bulk storage situation that could become a potential problem, I think that we would have the authority to get them to remove it right now. OK, so Springfield sounds like they're pretty good on this one. You could get more specific with it, but every time you do that, sometimes you just end up leaving out things that you're you should have included because you get specific and then you can't go back. <laughs> sure, I totally get that. All right, um, review subdivision and development ordinances for public safety concerns. Uh, we'd be happy to, but I mean, what kind of public safety concerns? Um, this this was pulled from the old plan, so um, I'm not entirely sure. No, I understand that you don't know. I'm not. I'm not suggesting you do. But like this, it, again, happy to do it. But but this isn't very specific. Like an sure. example would be great. You know, relating. Yeah, to I actually, I tend to think that this one probably could come out because, like, as far as at the county level, we have a, a planning meeting every Monday that. Like if there's concerns, they would come up. So. OK, let's get rid of it. All right, proper naming and numbering of streets and addresses is critical to public safety and also promotes better service delivery. The county and cities should work together to develop a well coordinated system for coordination of street names, subdivision names and mapping efforts between the cities and the county. We currently check all that in our databases across the board. Um, I have a subdivision layer with all the subdivision names in it. Um, I would say we're doing that currently. OK, so this is ongoing between cities and counties. Um, we can say GI, it's in the GIS department. Um, yeah, and okay. the proper naming and numbering of streets and addresses, that goes back to revision of ordinances too, but as far as we coordinate it as best we can right now. OK. And it also involves um, alerting the tax assessor's office as well. OK, so GIS and tax assessor. Thank you. Um, thanks, everybody. I, I know this this is long, but it's it's helpful. We're making great progress. Um, examine existing codes and ordinances for fire safety. Amend codes and ordinances to provide better driveway access, increased visibility of house numbers, um, et cetera. That's almost a, like a more specific of that public safety piece that we just talked about like now we're now it's honing in on fire safety in particular type of public safety yeah sorry i was muted um this is gonna be city and county fire um right. we actually have several um items in our fire prevention ordinance um it's not worded exactly like that but it's it's fairly close okay so we could say this is ongoing Sure. Okay. Seek state and federal grants to update fire equipment, including wildland hand tools, lightweight wildland PPE gear, and brush trucks, as well as other equipment. 
Yeah, this is ongoing city and county fire departments, um, specifically through the with the county. It's going to be through finance through our uh, grant coordinator. OK, perfect. Become a Firewise community. Uh, this is actually this one is on the state. This is on Georgia Forestry Commission. Ah, OK, so we will take that out. Well, Billy was at the first meeting um, from the Georgia Forestry Commission. Do we need to just check in with him or is it a coordination, Clint, with the state? Um, That's actually, Billy would have to really hone in on that one. Part, okay, of the so issue, um, part of the issue with this is that currently Effingham's Forestry Division only has one ranger, which is Billy. Um, so state funding is not allowing for further expansion of that department. They're constantly looking for additional rangers, but it is going to be uh, this will probably need to be removed, given that it is a state issue uh, and we're at this would be at their behest. OK. So this would not be something that can I'm just like trying to understand, Hannah. So um, it, like the state would not tell the county or the communities that they need to become a firewise community. This, this would be a com like a, the community wanting to do it itself, right? right. Like, okay. Okay, add signage along roads to mark hydrants. Really, this one can be removed. Okay. Is it complete or unnecessary? Uh, generally unnecessary. Okay. I'm not sure about this one then too. This one is, is already, this one is, com as far as the county is complete, we we have a water ordinance that relates to any new subdivision. Okay. Um, anybody from the cities have a comment on this? Uh, we usually let uh, Clinton and them look over any of the subdivisions and developments that we have. So I, I don't know if we have anything. I mean, we do have some specific things, but we always let uh, let them double check behind us too. Okay, awesome. And it's the same way with Guyton. Okay. Okay. Continue to participate in the National Flood Insurance Program to protect existing and new developments, to ensure new buildings and infrastructure are not in harm's way, and to ensure continued compliance with NFIP requirements. Um, so that should be county and cities. All of you should be considering or continuing to participate in the NFIP. Um, I know, Teresa, that you coordinate for the county, um, and it's the town manager at Guyton. Sorry, Lindsay and Kayla, I'm saying this for you all. Um, and Aaron, are are you the floodplain administrator at Springfield? Um, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure if we have that as a designated person or if that's just something that we we just handle when it comes up. Okay. So we'll look into that. Part of this one is also making sure we get those um, NFIP maps, the flood insurance maps adopted by our cities. So that's that also speaks to that too. Yes. Um, let's see. Floodproof existing wastewater treatment plants, pump stations, and lift stations that are located in flood hazard areas raise electrical components above the BFE. Base flood elevation. Counties and cities. Um, and EOM does that? Um, we help with the uh, determining the capital projects uh, a lot of times in coordination with some of these master plans um, and work and make recommendations to each of the cities and counties when we've got the issues. So uh, it just depends on how extensive it is and if it's a very large scale or if it's you know minor things like moving a control panel up, that sort of thing. Okay.
Um, create larger buffer zones to keep development out of the floodplain. Consider using this land to create county parks or open space. That should say county or city parks. Uh, this is Teresa. I, I would I would suggest we say consider creating extensive buffer zones rather than that more declarative statement because again I, I'm just thinking in terms of members of the public looking at an adoptive plan and bringing it up during a rezoning hearing where they tell us that our hazard mitigation plan requires us to create a buffer zone to keep development out of the floodplain when that's not really what this statement would do but that's how it might be used but certainly we would cons you know that's something we can consider and that and cities and counties alike have properties in the special flood hazard area but as far as creating an extensive buffer zone that's not really a, that's not currently a priority as far as i know and um i would i would i would change that i would suggest we change that to consider creating okay thank you yep Okay, so this one is sort of a public outreach um, issue. Encourage residents in flood prone areas to elevate homes. Um, so that could be county and cities, I think. Um, yes, that probably should be. And again, I would suggest that we maybe be less specific here. Encourage residents to, I, I'm not sure what the language should be, but. To retrofit. Yeah, that could be it uh, to, you know, to, per, to, to explore ways to protect your property. Any new development in the special flood hazard area does get elevated. You know, that's, it goes through a building permit review and an elevation certificate is required. Yeah. So we can certify through that as built that, that they're elevated. But this, um, you know, it's almost putting some liability on the county here and the cities, but, but encouraging residents to uh, learn more about ways to protect their property that's certainly something that we do and will continue to do okay Lindsay and kill let's tweak that to um encouraging residents to learn more about ways to protect their property um and it sounds like that's an ongoing effort um okay limit development in floodplain areas uh same thing um I mean, how, you know, that we don't have, our ordinance doesn't limit development floodplain areas. It, it, it limits it in the sense that we require, you know, studies and, you know, adherence to the regulations, but we don't, we don't just say you can't develop in, in okay. floodplain A. So that, that's a really dangerous statement. <laughs> I'm with Teresa. That would be a pretty fun conversation. <laughs> All right. Anna, is that some of the discussion of the community rating system too? And, yes, and the point structure for yes, improving the of, liability for homeowners? There's lots of points for restricting development in the SFHA. Um, but trust me, I was Charleston County's floodplain manager for the last three years before I came to Weston and Sampson, and I have I have experienced those battles, so I recognize that <laughs> yeah. this statement is loaded. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, it. I, I will say though, it's not an impossibility. There are CRS points available for actually restricting development in floodplain areas, um, and places do do it. Um, but, but yes, I recognize those concerns for sure. So, Anna, do, does um, special floodplain hazard area? Is that perfectly equivalent with floodplain areas, special hazard area? Is that equal floodplain? Like is in, that for, those, for CRS? For yes. CRS, for CRS. Yes, they only care about the SFHA. This also could be limiting fill in the SFHA. Um, it's not always about limiting development. It could be um, other things sort of related to development, like fill um, is really what comes to my mind as well. Um, but Could it be something along the lines of consider strategies to uh, protect floodplain areas or something like that? I'm thinking of like along the way Teresa is is discussing. Sure. 
And I like that because, you know, yes, we'd like to get more points. We'd like to improve our classification. That would be great. Uh, and if and if limiting development in the special flood hazard area is how we do that, that's fine. But, you know, just this is sort of a loaded statement. But, yeah, rewording it as, you know, explore ways to improve our rating in the community, you know, improve our classification in the community rating system encompasses this. And as we go forward and can make recommendations to our elected officials, this might be one of the options that we give them. Sure. So the next one actually um, <laughs> is, is just Sorry. that. <laughs> That's okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> so yes, maybe keeping it a little bit more broad and saying uh, working towards new ways to improve improve the CRS rating is yeah. a better way to look at that. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the cities, we want to start meeting requirements to maybe become a CRS community. And um, again, for Lindsay and Kayla, um, Teresa and Development Services coordinates CRS for the county. Um, and then at the cities, we'll have to explore who might be the floodplain administrator, um, who might be handling that at each of the cities. Okay. Um, this next one, um, I don't know if y'all do you have a tree preservation ordinance, Teresa. Well, not specifically. We have, we have language that is not nearly strong enough. And through our future land use element update, we were hoping to include, or rather maybe our zoning, we were hoping to include any model language that the um, Forestry Commission could provide. So uh, keep that, but yeah, I'd say keep that because that's okay. We're, we're kind of on that path. So awesome. Aaron, what about Springfield? Not sure. We still have Aaron. All right, we'll keep that one for now um, for the county. Um, this next one is quite, quite vague. Improve existing parks. So this comes essentially from the Effingham County Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Right. We're doing um, Monday night. We're having a meeting with the rec board and showing them the master plan. Then Tuesday night, we have a meeting with the steering committee about this and once they've all had a chance to look at it then we will put it out to the public um there are different parts that we are working on right now we're working on part of sand hill getting the parking lot taken care of that is being done as we speak um, fantastic so there but there's different ones the next part that we're working um going to be working on is Baker Baker Park Baker Pond Baker Park however some people call it different things sure great okay so this is ongoing um and it sounds like the Parks and Rec Department is handling it is that right Angela is that, oh yes that okay they are handling it awesome so this next one is sort of similar um these next few come from the parks and rec master plan and it specifically called out springfield to to explore joint parks projects with the county and springfield can anyone comment on that i haven't heard anything about that but i can get with tim and ask him okay that'd be great thank you so much yes ma'am uh, so this was uh, these were items from an older plan. I don't know if it's relevant, but we have the new uh, recreation department, which is in the city of Springfield, but county maintained. So I don't know if that was a product of some of that. Okay, possibly. So this could potentially be a completed item. And we okay. um, we have a park in downtown Springfield that was kind of partially city owned, partially county owned that we've consolidated into one and are in the process of renovating that right now as a city. So some some of that may have been because of this point. Okay, awesome. Yeah, that plan is a little bit older. So it sounds like this is maybe ongoing on the verge of completion. Although it sounds like, you know, this is a good thing to continue exploring in the future too. Um, look for opportunities to acquire undeveloped land to create green spaces and increase connectivity of green spaces. So I know this is funding dependent. 
Um, but if anybody, are, is everyone looking to do this or it's not a priority for some folks? You know, that master plan, the stormwater master plan is going to start like painting a picture of where there's an opportunity, where there's um, land and where there's also like potential flood issues and and like the amount of modeling that Pond is doing. That's that's one way to start seeing what these areas might be other than known flooding areas and flood plains. Mm hmm. So um, maybe we'll list this one as ongoing. Yeah, I would definitely keep this as ongoing. OK, great. Thank you, Teresa. Um, this next one's very similar. Um, expand and improve green space. Set aside green space when development occurs. Um, this is true. In our higher, event, in our higher density um, zoning districts, we require a set aside of open space. Fantastic. So this is already happening. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, we do the same thing in Springfield and are looking at making that a requirement for all residential developments of five units or more. Awesome. Thank you, Aaron. OK, I am happy to announce we're more than halfway through, um, so we will wrap it up soon. Let's just get in a few more so that we have even less to do at the next meeting. Um, conservation subdivision ordinances. Um, to promote or require the preservation of open space. I mean, we're trying our best to encourage people to do that. We've allotted um, some ordinances to where if you, you know, the denser you go, the smaller the lot, rather, the more green space you have to leave to try to encourage that. But that's a, a double-edged sword with developers and usable property and things. Sure, sure. Um, so maybe we'll list this one as ongoing. I mean, it's always a goal. It's just a hard one to get to. Sure, absolutely. And like I said, with HMP, it's okay to dream big. Um, this next one is to encourage open space preservation via tax incentives. That would be interesting, but I think the overall decision maker there is going to end up being the tax assessor's office. Okay. And they kind of do that with the CUVA program. Uh. They do, you know, people can set aside their undeveloped tracts uh, for in 10 year contracts or 10 year agreements with the tax assessor and get an abatement on property taxes. Awesome. That's a huge incentive. And, yeah. and there are penalties if they breach it. So, I mean, it's, just, it's a tight program. I, okay. I think the Cuba is only for 10 acres or larger. Oh, okay. So the, the tax incentives would have to be for for smaller development areas. And and I think I mentioned last, I think in the last meeting was, you know, is the green space, is that some of the space that with roads and, and water, wastewater that should, and uh, drainage that should be turned over to county or cities and larger developments, just an idea. OK, so maybe we tweak this one a little bit. Um, but it sounds like it's sort of ongoing at the county. Um, all right, Lindsay and Kayla, you good with that one? All right. Need for green infrastructure to provide resiliency county and citywide. So this one's fairly vague. Um, Teresa, this is the one where we talked about a little bit before that um, if the if the stormwater reviews and and Kristen, if the stormwater reviews were tied to um, the coastal stormwater supplement for Georgia, um, that that. Uh, has a emphasis on green infrastructure first before standard stormwater practices. And then if standard stormwater practices go in, say ponds, that they're better ponds, they're easier to maintain, there there are um, catch basins that are easier to clean. There's no surprises for HOAs, you know, 20 years down the line when no one saved enough money to clean out their pond. 
So it's really thinking about other ways of doing things. Um, and the Georgia already has the coastal stormwater supplement that is applicable to all 26 counties. This is Teresa. It seems like what we need to do is is create an, uh, a requirement or maybe incentive to use the you know the greener infrastructure rather than because we only ever get ponds. That's all we get. You know, and we're we're happy and lucky to get them, and we don't accept them, and we do leave them for the HOA to maintain. But I've never seen any effort to do anything other than ponds, and it would be it would be great if we could promote or incentivize that somehow. Okay, yeah, that's such a big conversation, like a like everywhere right now. How does how do we shift off of those old practices, the way we we're normally used to doing things? And it's pretty tricky too, Teresa. Again, because like most of the time, they want that material excavated out of those ponds for fill in the subdivision. So that it's a tricky thing, but it's a it's an ongoing conversation. So that's a good one. Yes, yeah, so maybe we can tweak the wording of this one to finding an incentive or providing an incentive for green infrastructure. Um, that's great. Yeah, explore. Like, let's not we're, don't say we're going to provide anything, but yeah, explore. You know, right. Creating some sort of structure that that would be really good. Okay, awesome. Um, just a couple more. We're going to wrap up here in just a minute so we can talk real quick about upcoming dates. Um, thank you, everybody, for your help today. Um, community cleanup day. That was something that's from the um, Effingham wildfire plan. I don't know if that's something that y'all still do. Um, I I know that EOM, I think it's EOM that may have kind of led some cleanup days in the past. We've done like river cleanup events, um, kind of tied in with MS4 and the watershed protection plans with various areas. Um, usually it's once a year, um, but it's, it's more cleaning around the River streams, picking up debris, things like that. So I'm not sure where this particular one originally came from, and if it would kind of correlate, or if it was referring to something different other than that. Okay, great to know. Either way, um, all right. That feels like a good place for us to stop. Um, we still have about 25 more action items. We'll save them for next time. Um, I'm going to fly down. Oh my gosh, we did so, so many today. Great job, everybody. Um, just a, a few quick things before I let everybody go. Um, the survey is live on the website. If you guys haven't had a chance, please check out the Effingham County HMP update webpage. Um, IT did a fantastic job updating that for us. It looks great. Um, there's an ArcGIS story map up about the planning process as well. Um, so definitely check that out, share it, send it to your friends, family, whatever. Um, and there's also the survey link on there too. Um, the survey, we can resend you the link if you'd like, if you wanna push it out to everyone you know in Effingham County, that would be great. We've gotten a lot of responses so far, so we're excited about that. Um, we'll be in Effingham County on Friday um, to have a couple meetings in person, and then we'll be participating in the Effingham Night Out event. Um, if anyone would like to join us, we'll have a table there. It's from 6 to 10 p.m. at Ulmer Park. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but we will be there passing out surveys, passing out flyers about the public meeting, which is on March 29th um, at 6 o'clock p.m. in the Effingham County Administrative Building. Um, we'll be presenting the first draft of the plan and then also doing some additional public engagement, talking to people about, you know, where they've experienced flooding, um, things like that, how prepared they feel for hazards, et cetera. Um, so if you can make it to the public meeting as well on March 29th, that would be great. Um, we'd love to have everybody's support. Um, and then the last thing is our next committee meeting is April 5th. We'll have a few things to go over and then we will finish knocking out these mitigation actions. It will be much quicker than this time. Like I said, there's only about 20 left. So great job, everybody. Um, does anybody have any questions for us? I have a question. 
about the Effingham night out. I think Friday night it might start at five. Oh, I thought I it was six. I think it's like a, f a five ish. Does that sound right? Um, any anyone else? Um, I saw a I saw a uh, article for it, and they were saying six o'clock. Oh, is it six? The, okay. Ad, yeah. I think everybody Great. will be getting there earlier setting up, but I think it actually starts at six. Six yeah. to ten. Yeah, Excel says six to eight on the email they sent out Monday. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Well, as always, everyone, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please reach out to um, any of us. We're always happy to talk to you about anything. So thank you, everyone. I know today was a little bit dry, but again, it's really important that we collect this information and we really appreciate your help. All right, everybody, have a great afternoon. Thank you, you all. Thanks. Bye.